On behalf of McNally Robinson Booksellers, welcome and thank you for joining us to celebrate the launch of Awakening the Sleeping Presence with poet Lubin Klobuchar. A Serbian poet from Croatia and now living in Saskatoon, Lubin has published 10 poetry books since 1984. Many of his poems have in been included in literary journals in the former Yugoslavia, and his work appears in the Anthology of Serbian Poetry of the 20th Century in Croatia, published by the Serbian Cultural Society, and in the VCE Serbian Reader, published by the Victorian School of Languages. Two of his collections have been translated into English, his first titled Footprints, an e-book located on his website, and his latest publication, Awakening the Sleeping Presence. To open this evening with some notes on the translation, please welcome Daniela Vitovic. Thank you. As Marcino said already, I uh, translated Lubin's book, and I'd just like to tell you a little bit about that experience and um, what I found in Lubin's poetry. Do you have time to stop, to look with a misty eye and become the sky, to open your arms and fend off the tide? Do you have time to listen, to breathe, to fly away without thoughts, without desires? If you have, we will recognize each other without searching, without, without touch, wordlessly. These are the words, the writer's invitation to you to join him in his searches for answers, in the freedom of feelings and thoughts that are present in his poetry. In each poem, he is stubbornly searching for answers to his view of life, philosophy of the moment. He is not afraid to openly show emotion and to question. In each of his poems, he is born again and dies again. When I was translating his poems, it struck me that I'm reading, analyzing, and trying to paint again with different set of colors a number of different lives. Lubin's poetry is the poetry of the moment. He does not think ahead of time. It is the emotion of the moment, whether it's love, pain, grudge, nostalgia, impression of the blue sky, or shining river floating away that his poems tell us about. Once he said to me that sometimes, when he reads his own poems, he cannot recognize them. And that's because he has moved ahead and is now in a new life. Lyuban is born in 1963 um, in a little town of Petrinja in former Yugoslavia. The best moments of his life in Petrinja where he lived the first 30 years of his life. He spent by river Kupa. And the river became connected with first love secretive talks with friends, a freedom and beauty. Rivers of this world are Luban's inspiration, and they bring back emotion and memories. Wherever he went, there was a river, a source of quietness and meaning. Various rivers flow through his poetry. He was searching in everyday life, in nature, in professional life, working all kinds of jobs. He was waiting tables, working as a cleaner, writing, then working as an actor and coordinating cultural activities in Petrinja, and writing again, to move on and own a nightclub and a video club, and again writing. Every life, every job, every country and river brought to him interesting people and new experiences and new questions for which he needed to find answers, and still does. Unfortunately, many of his friends and one whole way of life, way of life and belief system disappeared in war in former Yugoslavia. In pain, with wounded soul, not belonging anymore to his own city, to his own country, he came to Canada, 
to find healing and search for more answers along the banks of yet another river. It was difficult to translate Luban, Luban's, sorry, <laughs> it was difficult to translate Luban's poetry. It is harsh, sometimes so deep and personal, so free of, con of conventions that words for it simply did not exist in this new language I was trying to put it into. The emotion, always a different one, is what seemed important. And that is what you can find in this book of poetry. Deep, unconventional, raw, without explanation, still an open question. That is what most of Luban's poems are. I hope you will recognize questions and join our poet in the search for answers. Besides this collection of poetry, Luban also published following books, and I'll just, uh, if you don't mind, read all of the publications that uh, Luban has. Noche su placa le bresque, Peaches have cried tonight, in 1984. Neka vremena, Some alien times, 1990. Tishina uočima, Stillness in my eyes, in 1996. Nebeska vrata, The heavenly doors, 1997. Balkanski vjetrovi, the Balkan Winds, 1997. Okopnješe moji snjegovi, My Melted Snows, 1998. Umni Ghetto, The Ghetto of Thoughts, 1999. Tihovanja, Quietness, in 2011, it's an internet publication. Footprints, 2011, this book is uh, also an internet publication. It is uh, a representation of Luban's work, selected poems of all of his um, books translated into English. And Buđenje uspavanog prisustva uh, in 2012 in Serbian language and now as Awakening, Awakening the Sleeping Presence here in Saskatoon. You can find examples of his poetry including full two internet publications on his website which is www.lubankobucar.me. I would also like to thank to Paula Lori and Tamara for editing um, translations because no matter how well I learned English, I'm still missing these and A's when I write. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Daniela. Now, with some of her thoughts on Lubin's work, please welcome one of his editors, Lori Irwin. First off, I'm going to apologize for my croaky voice. About the middle of the afternoon, I became inflicted with an allergic reaction and my voice is very croaky. Um, so instead of sounding 90, I sound 100. <laughs> I should start off by saying that my husband and I first met Lubin and his family when they arrived at the airport in Saskatoon. Lubin's aunt, Olga Davidovich, was a good friend of our family and facilitated his family coming to Canada. And as Daniela pointed out, they were leaving a country that had been torn apart by war and so his writings of course reflect his life's experiences and he also reflects on what it means to others. So I'm going to give you a short version of what his poetry meant to me and what I got from his poetry. In his poetry he explores the ideas of endless circles of life. It's a spiritual quest to find meaning in a process he sees as repeating itself over and over. In a sense he's fighting for freedom. Freedom from inner and outer constraints. And his weapon is poetry. Words are the arrows that he slings. His emancipation comes from letting those words fly to be shaped and formed on the page as poetry that transcends personal and physical boundaries. Dubin asks, what is truth? Does truth become a lie? Or does a lie become truth? Or perhaps they are the same? And now I'd like to read a couple of the poems from Awakening 
the sleeping presence. The first one is titled, Mirror. Tired words elude the hatred of hungry eyes. Stalled peace longingly caresses the pages of a darkened childhood. The end celebrates the tiredness of endless beginnings of empty creations by confused designers. That is how a lie spills into truth that blends into golden molds which were ideals of misplaced generations. My mirror. Do we lie with smiles purchased in markets of foreign unscrupulous worlds? Or are you my mirror? Or the truth? Finally, I'd like to read a poem entitled Know Yourself. Know yourself for others to recognize. Appease the heavens. Open the eyes of the soul. Give out your hands when sought. Live the truth. Be the truth. Honor the meaninglessness of nonsense. Everything has a plan. And when the heart is like a fragile branch, languished, discover yourself and be a child of the heavens. Lori. Now, reading from his new collection, Awakening the Sleeping Presence, please welcome poet Lubin Klobuchar. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, in the beginning, I would like to thank all of you for choosing to uh, spend this evening with me uh, and I would like to thank McNally Robinson and uh, Marcy for giving me opportunity to uh, exchange some energy with you and tell you a little bit more about about uh, my life writing uh, but before of that I would like also to thank uh, uh, Daniela uh, Lori Paula and Tamara, uh, beautiful group of people who helped me to uh, make this project alive. Uh, it was a challenge for me uh, once I came in new environment, new country, new language, uh, with lots of books, lots of thoughts, lots of ideas, but uh, uh, English need, in, uh, language need time to be built. So uh, it was very difficult to, for me to, to uh, finalize that project and with, with them it was, it was much easier and I hope uh, you're gonna like it. Uh, also, I would like to thank uh, one uh, beautiful soul <coughs> who doesn't exist anymore in this reality. Uh, soul who helped uh, me and my family to come here in this beautiful country to start new life. And that was my auntie Olga Davidovic who found me and my family in refugee camp. It was 1995 and uh, she did everything possible to, to help us and uh, bring us here. Uh, even if she's not alive, she doesn't exist in this reality. I know she's she's here with us and uh, she's listening and I know she's happy. Instead of me talking about about my poetry, I prefer that my pro poetry is talking talking about me and uh, I, I'm just gonna touch a little bit, uh, jump from topic to topic because Daniela and Lori uh, said uh, some things and in the end in the second part of our program I, I would prefer to if you have some questions to 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 ask and that's maybe better than just me uh, me talking mm, I would I'm going to use the word uh, coincidence but I believe many of you will agree with me 
uh, coincidence doesn't exist. Everything has a really purpose in this life. Whatever happened, it's happening in the right moment, the right place. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit back in 1984 when coincidentally uh, my father was in hospital with uh, our rel relative. I didn't have a, a chance to meet him before. And in a little conversation, I found his uh, established writer. And in conversation with my dad, my dad told, told him, well, Luban is writing a little bit. So our relative, he said, oh, I would like to see that. And my writing from until that time was just writing, exchange thoughts with nature and uh, be quiet, write the poem, put in pocket and forget. But he wanted to, to see that. And uh, once I show him uh, my work from teenage days, like I said, that was 1984, uh, he loved it and he said, we should, we should uh, try to publish that. That was never my idea. It was just my way to communicate with people, communicate with friends and through the poetry. And uh, in my surprise, uh, he showed my poetry to the publishers and it started rolling. They like it, they publish. So somehow I end up with, with uh, 10 books of poetry. I don't know if I'm going to publish any more. It really doesn't, doesn't important. Uh, I just uh, think about myself. I was lucky. Some people, they like my poetry, they publish books, but even if I don't publish any more books, I will continue to write because that's, that's my life. That's my way of, way, of, way of communication. I grew up in a small city in Croatia, Petrinja, around 25,000 people. And uh, Daniela mentioned there was no day in my life that I didn't spend at least five to ten minutes minimum to walk to that river to find uh, my peaceful place, to find a way to communicate with the universe and be quiet. Because when I quiet, when it's quiet around me, that's, that's my best way for the communication. And that's the moment where when I'm able to receive all that words and poems who are existing somewhere else and uh, I'm, I like to say I just scratch the surface of place in the universe where all thoughts and all, all, all worlds are, are existing and uh, uh, I just put them on paper and I write them down. After a couple books of poetry my, my outside world and inside world, they became in huge collision. I couldn't understand what is going on, uh, why I'm unhappy when my outside world, like Daniela says, I was in one moment owner of private video club, I was owner of nightclub, and everything what could be ideal from some people perspective, money, traveling, cars, house, I should be happy, but somewhere deep inside me, I, I was really unhappy. I felt sadness and I couldn't understand why. I try like always to, to go a walk beside that river where I only find my happiness, but I, I just couldn't. A couple of years later, answer came, that was 1990, uh, war came in my country and I couldn't access that river in anymore because that river became front line. So that was six, year before, six years before, so somehow, somewhere deep inside me, I was getting the message, this is going to happen, but I didn't understand why I felt that unhappiness in that river when I was still able to go over there. My soul felt what is, what is going to happen. War came, we left our country, our small city, we left everything material, what we have, 
lots of sadness, lots of blood. I lost lots of friends, but there was some strange moment. My inside world changed because I start writing again. All material things, they disappear, but I was able to find the world, uh, words and write. That brought me happiness. So, uh, in quiet times, I get my, my answer. I'm the poet, I'm the writer. Material things, they come and go. Uh, I will remind you what many of you know. The place where we came from is the place where we didn't bring nothing. The place where we are going when we decide to end our life journey, we are, gonna, we are not going to take anything with us. So material things are really not important. I learned that. Of course, there was lots of sadness. In some moments of my life, I, uh, I believed I, I built big walls around me. I just couldn't uh, answer the dilemma uh, why I did that. Maybe I didn't want people to enter my space, my quiet space, or I didn't want to go out and see what, uh, what is happening, why is happening, especially in my surrounding where I spend uh, lots of time in my life where I learn why people are saying sometimes when you're saying goodbye to somebody, your friend or family member, be careful and don't forget to tell him I love you. I will see you again because, like I said, I experienced some people, they just disappeared from my life. I lost lots of friends in war and uh, that's maybe something what triggered my thinking about purpose of life. I know some soul, souls, they dis decide to experience themselves uh, that way, uh, but maybe my poetry, especially this book, Awakening the Sleeping Presence, was something product of my, my search, because I can accept that I walk blind to the part of my life. There is lots of signage in our lives, on our roads. The God of Creator, they planted that signage, but some people, they're not able to read them. Some people, they don't want to read them. Some people, they, don't, they can't understand them. So poetry was my way to connect the source of that explanation that existence and my life, what I choose to experience uh, in this life here. Like I said, I would, I would prefer, it's very hard uh, for you probably and for me to touch the top of Awakening the Sleeping Presence because you, you, you were not able to, to read my other books because every book is one step of my life, every book is 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 collection of, of feelings, of thoughts. Uh, but we will we will jump over that, and I'm I'm going to to read a couple poems uh, from the newest book, and uh, after the program, I will uh, be more than happy if you have uh, some some questions. Be free to ask. First poem is uh, My Homeland. Sleeping like a handful of untold dreams, she laid stout, unconcurred, tirelessly wistful. My Homeland. Nowhere else were mothers giving life to and buried the unnamed. Even the unborn were exterminated. There the world spat, laughing at the intangible pain of others and broken generations of eternal nobles. The blood screamed with flesh, saturating the anguished land, wavy from red flowers of trampled hopes. I see children's rooms, 
cursed by the chuckle of barren eyes that conjured my end of their unaware. I did not suspect limits of invisible omens, nor touch the hands carrying cries in times when we needed to laugh and cry. Only in my country, the scene became unseen and fears became laws. The world did not grow watered by nectars of knowledge, while some strange tongues darted tame seals of burnt homes. I sensed sometimes that forgotten fate gets tireless in wanderings, hardened by the image of my grandfather with a pensive white expression who comprehends the sobs of lonely riverbanks. I hear him silently walking the spaces of voluntary exiles, praying for me and the shadows of my unrests, playful like candles lit after being alone for long. My homeland, temple of existence. Remembering angry steps at the time of the high seas of silence, where I knew endlessly that God is because of that land with me sobbing. Second poem is Restlessness. Haunted by pulsating unrests, full of stubborn riddance, I pour out words forming floods of sprouted events, sentenced to the fate of shoreless wild rivers. The moon, with the look of a swan, is relaxed, soaking up billions of eyes, quietly pleading, terrified by the dreadful sounds suffocated by the clouds of their own loneliness. I fell in love with waiting, living with absences. I embraced giving without taking anything, amazed by the madness of intelligence, dazzled by the rampage of creativity, searching for the remembrance slipping in my soul, suspecting that the source from extinction will return. Strong I defeated the illusion of space, dismissed the laws of time, meaningless in the infinity of the intelligence, where the lies of belonging awkwardly worship, groveling in darkness, aroused by the solitude of those who live but are not. Powerful in prayer, I descend to the bottom of becoming a path to a kingdom of whispering peace, where untied I float shattering the fears of my tired companions. I reject the unemotional formations, the foolish dull marching of ruffling dead uniforms, covering awareness, pulling away from controlled hatred of precise vermin. I reconcile the truth in my genes, convincing me that the pain does not exist. I give growing up in fragrance of sleepy roses whose petals have hidden for billions of years. I wake up, I sway, I get steady, lulled by the truth of the cosmic cradle. In the end, I'm going to read one poem, same poem, My Homeland, in a Serbian language, because of a couple, couple of reasons. It's my homeland. A uh, couple of my Canadian friends, they asked me to, to read in the Serbian language uh, just to hear sound. And uh, some of you are here from former Yugoslavia and uh, they will understand what I'm saying. Moja zemlja. Punovna košačica neispričani snova, ležaše ona stamena, nepokorena, neumorna, čeznotljiva. Zemlja moja. Nigde drugdje ne rađaše se i umjeraše bezimeni, čak i nerođeni bivaše trebljeni. Tu se svjetovi ispljuvaše, nasmijani neopipljivim tuđim bolom izlomljenih pokoljenja i vječitih nomada. Krv rištaše sa mesom, natapajući mučnu grudu, ustala sam u crvenim cvjetovima izgaženih nadanja. Kad kad prognam slikama nevidljivih ikona, viđam sobičak proklet cerekanjem neplodnih očiju, 
što prizivaše mi kraj nesvjesne svoga. Ne sluti granice nevidljivih predskazanja, niti tako hruke što nosiše vapaje u doba kad se trebalo i smijati i plakati. Jedino u mojoj zemlji viđeno bivaše neviđeno i strahovi postaše zakoni. Riječ nije rasla nezalivena nektarima znanja, dok neki čudni jezici polacaše pitomim pragovima nagorjelih ognjišta. Slutim kad kada sahranjenu vjeru neumorno u lutanjima, podoprat likom svoga djeda zamišljenog bijelog lica što spozna ridanje rijeke samotnih obala. Čujem ga nečujnoga, korača prostorima dobrovoljnih izgnanstava, moleći se za mene i sjenu mojih nemira, razigrani ko svijeće nakon dugih samovanja zapaljene. Moja zemlja, hram postojanja. Sjećanje sluđuje korake u vrijeme pučina tišine, gdje beskrajan znadoh i Bog za tom grudom uzame jeca. In the end, I would like to say this. I don't know how long I'm going to, to stay in Saskatoon, but I would like to, to tell you I'm, I'm happy to have you in my life and I hope for some of you from time to time this book is going to be a remembrance that uh, I existed in yours. Thank you. If you want to ask questions uh, this way or maybe a different way with coffee, tea and cookies, just approach me. Uh, don't be scared. <laughs> yes. I know nothing about uh, Serbian Croatian poetry, English, a little bit about Russian, some European. Uh, who are some of the poets that inspired you or that you like to read? Uh, there's no difference between Serbian and, and Croatian poetry. Uh, there's no difference between Serbs and Croats. In my mind, we have that unfortunate collision of mind who brought the war, but I, I never uh, have any questions about nationality, skin color, and, and uh, I have a couple, couple friends. That, uh, my son, he, he got the name because of Russian poet uh, uh, Sergei Yesenin. I loved him. Uh, there's a couple poets with, who I, with who, whose poetry I, I grew up. I can't say I was influenced. I love it to read, uh, but I believe every Every poet is is uh, different. Unfortunately, poetry for, from former Yugoslavia or Yugoslavian language it's not that much translated because uh, it's very difficult. These ladies who work in this book they they know that I. Lots of people they ask me why don't you try to to write in English. It's very difficult because simple my mind uh, in her desire to write you need to translate in your mind from Serbian in English and that word simply they don't exist uh, in English and uh, I'm afraid you are losing the meaning with respect to English but you are losing the meaning because Serbian language is much much uh, uh, richer I would say but if you're asking me about specific uh, writers I could I could I certainly continue this conversation with you uh, with tea and, and coffee and I can give you some names and of course you can you can uh, research but yeah that's that more more questions
I guess we are for coffee and tea. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, thank you, Lubin, for sharing some of your work with us tonight. Thank you to Daniela and to Lori for speaking. And thank you, everyone, for coming here, for carrying your own chairs when necessary. Uh, we will move a few uh, out, so we'll have some room to mingle around. I think Lubin might have mentioned that there's coffee and cookies on the way. But he will also be here at the front of the room signing books if you'd like a personalized copy. Any purchases can be made through the main desk on your way out. I hope you'll join us for the rest of the evening. Thanks so much for coming. So congratulations to Lubin.